Liberty has ruthless enemies, but never fear. CNN's Andrew Kaczynski is on the job. He is deeply alarmed that the new chief of staff to National Security Advisor John Bolton defended anti-Muslim and far-right activists in a pair of online columns. Clearly, all upstanding citizens, in Kaczynski's view, should be up in arms about this, the latest indication of the Trump administration's disquieting dalliance with the far right. But Kaczynski's far right bogeymen weren't exactly Hitler and Mussolini. It turns out that in columns for Fox News written in 2016 and 2017, Fred Flights, as vice president of Frank Gaffney's think tank, defended anti-Muslim activists Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller and far-right activist Cliff Kincaid from their designations as hate groups by the Southern Poverty Law Center, an Alabama-based nonprofit activist group that tracks civil rights violations and hate crimes. His defense highlights his ties to more extreme elements of the fringe, anti-Muslim right. So says Kaczynski. Kaczynski produced a quote from Fred Flights as evidence of his perfidy. Smearing anyone who speaks out against radical Islam is one of the SPLC's priorities. Accordingly, it has placed on its hate lists Jihad Watch and its director Robert Spencer, American Freedom Defense Initiative and its director Pamela Geller, my organization, the Center for Security Policy, and our president Frank Gaffney are also on the SPLC's hate lists due to our principled stand against the global jihad movement. That's what Fred Flight said that Andrew Kaczynski thought was so outrageous. Now, taking a principled stand against the global jihad movement is what Kaczynski apparently thinks makes one anti-Muslim and far-right. But in demonizing his chosen villains, Kaczynski revealed more about himself than about us. He wrote breathlessly, Geller is well known for her inflammatory public comments about Muslims and Islam and has long peddled the theory that there is a broad conspiracy among Muslims to impose Sharia law in the U.S. A broad conspiracy among Muslims to impose Sharia law in the U.S. Inconceivable! And yet, a captured internal Muslim Brotherhood document says that the Muslim Brothers, quote, must understand that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying the Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house by their hands and the hands of the believers so that it is eliminated and Allah's religion is made victorious over all other religions. That's from an explanatory memorandum on the general strategic goal for the Brotherhood in North America by a key Brotherhood operative, Muhammad Akram. All the major Muslim organizations in the U.S., the Council on American Islamic Relations, the Islamic Society of North America, the Muslim American Society, the Muslim Student Associations, the International Institute of Islamic Thought, and more. They're all listed in the same document as partner organizations in this effort. But as far as Andrew Kaczynski is concerned, it's all just a conspiracy theory cooked up by Pamela Geller. Kaczynski also notes that I myself have said, quote, the harsh reality is that you cannot tell peaceful Muslims from jihadis in any discernible manner. Unfortunately, Kaczynski didn't actually provide a way to do that. He just thinks it's terrible that I pointed out that there isn't one. I said that in a 2014 speech in which the next sentence was this. And so it is simply ridiculous and suicidal to continue to import whole communities of Muslims from hot jihad areas like Somalia and Syria and Pakistan into the United States and drop them down into American communities. Now let's look at the record. Somali Muslim migrant Mohammed Barry in February 2016 stabbed multiple patrons at a restaurant owned by an Israeli Arab Christian. Ahmed Khan Rahani, an Afghan Muslim migrant, in September 2016 set off bombs in New York City and New Jersey. Arkan Tsetin, a Turkish Muslim migrant, in September 2016 murdered five people in a mall in Burlington, Washington. Tahir Adan, another Somali Muslim migrant, in October 2016 stabbed mall shoppers in St. Cloud, Minnesota while screaming, Allahu Akbar. Abdul Razak Artan, yet another Somali Muslim migrant, in November 2016 injured nine people with car and knife attacks at Ohio State University. Seventy-two jihad terrorists have come to the U.S. from countries listed in President Trump's initial immigration ban. What's more, all of the jihadis who murdered 130 people in Paris in November 2015 had just entered Europe as refugees the month before. 
In February 2015, the Islamic State boasted that it would soon flood Europe with as many as 500,000 refugees. The Lebanese Education Minister said in September of that year that there were 20,000 active jihadis among the refugees in camps in his country waiting to go to Europe. On May 10, 2016, Patrick Calvar, the head of France's DGSI Internal Intelligence Agency, said that the Islamic State was using migrant routes through the Balkans to get jihadis into Europe. But Andrew Kaczynski isn't worried about any of that, and he doesn't want you to be either. He just knows that it's wrong to care. Now I started to wonder what was in it for Andrew Kaczynski. So I reached out to him on Twitter, and I asked him the following questions. Hi, K-File, that's what he goes by on Twitter. I'm doing a story about you. Please answer a few questions. Number one, how did you decide that foes of jihad mass murder and Sharia oppression of gays, women, etc. were worse than jihad mass murderers themselves? Two, why didn't you ask me for comment in this piece defaming me? Did you ask the other people you defamed for comment? Three, did you get paid by any individual or group other than CNN to write this story? If so, who? 4. Are you aware that there have been over 30,000 jihad attacks around the world and an even greater casualty count since 9-11? Do you really think, in light of that fact, that Islamophobia is a worse problem than jihad terror? 5. Are you aware that Islamophobia is a propaganda term that was specifically chosen as a label to intimidate people into fearing to oppose jihad terror and Sharia oppression? Six. Do you think that if Bolton, Flights, Gaffney, Geller, and me are all ultimately silenced by the smear campaigns that you and others conduct, that the problem of jihad terror will disappear? 7. Why do all CNN journalists and other establishment media journalists reflect the exact same point of view on these issues? Do you think diversity of thought should be valued as much as diversity of skin color, etc.? Or would that be Islamophobic? 8. Are you aware that over a million Yazidis, Christians, and others have been murdered, displaced, or had their lives otherwise ruined in recent years by Islamic jihadis? Do you think those jihadis misunderstand Islam? How did this misunderstanding of Islam get so widespread? 9. Are you aware that the jihad agenda targets all unbelievers? Do you believe that you will be spared because of how useful you are to the forces of jihad? That's all for now, K-File. I look forward to seeing your answers. Thanks. Now, of course, Andrew Kaczynski, K-File, did not deign to answer, and so the questions remain. What benefit will Andrew Kaczynski get if he succeeds in destroying Fred Flights and the rest of us? What leads Kaczynski and his fellow establishment media journalists to work so hard to defame and marginalize people who are trying to defend basic principles of human rights and the norms of free societies? What kind of ideal world does Andrew Kaczynski envision? one in which the far right has been completely destroyed and leftists and Muslims live together in perfect multicultural harmony? One thing is certain. If Andrew Kaczynski succeeds and attains his goals of destroying the people he smears as far right and everything they stand for, the chaos he will thereby help unleash will eventually engulf him. Whether he will have the wit and the honesty to realize and admit that he was wrong before the jihadi's blade slices through his throat or those whom he loves are brutalized and enslaved, is anybody's guess. I'm Robert Spencer, a Shulman Fellow for the David Horowitz Freedom Center and Director of Jihad Watch. This video has been brought to you by the Center for Security Policy.